Hi guys, I'm here with my um, Dreams and Miracles book by Anne Spangler. And just a reminder, these are all true stories. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm here with you guys' story today. And today's story is by Rita Bennett. And it is called A Dream Remembered. So, let me get started by reading you the introduction. Dennis and Rita Bennett pioneered a movement of spiritual renewal that swept the nation in the 70s and 80s. Two weeks after their 20th wedding anniversary, Dennis died suddenly at their home in Edmonds, Washington. It was All Saints Day, 1991. Nearly four years earlier, Rita had had a dream that seemed to foreshadow Dennis's passing. She recounts it in slightly different form in her book, To Heaven and Back. I thought that name sounded familiar. I think I've read this. I think I'm pretty sure I read that book, To Heaven and Back. So I've probably heard this story. So let's get started with Rita's story. Dennis was 74 when he died. Both of us knew his health was precarious, but neither of us suspected that November 1st, 1991 would be our last day together on earth. Ten years earlier, Dennis had resigned as chief pastor of an active Apostle Church in order to devote himself to speaking and writing. That afternoon he was working busily at his computer and I was ensconed in the room next door, glancing up now and then from a stack of paperwork to gaze at the drizzle soaking the autumn trees outside. At 5.45 I headed toward the kitchen to put supper on the table but caught my breath as I passed Dennis's office and didn't want to believe what I was seeing. Dennis's chair had fallen backward with his body still in a seated position, his face the color of slate. The look of death was unmistakable. For years, Dennis had suffered from a heart murmur and a prolapsed heart valve. Not wanting to spend his last days lingering painfully in the hospital, he had prayed that God would either heal him or take him home. Merci mercifully, God had answered that prayer. But I was left to deal with the aftermath. The husband I had loved for so long had been taken from me in an instant. For the next two years, friends prayed with me and talked me through my grief and I began to heal from the shock of finding Dennis that day. Several months after his death, I came across an entry in my journal regarding a dream I had on January 28, 1988, three years and ten months prior to Dennis's death. Even then, the dream had seemed to foreshadow his passing. I dreamed Dennis was sitting in a garden and that he was very tired. He had been washing the leaves of a beautiful plant covered with dust. He called me over to look at it. The plant was like no other I had ever seen. Dennis showed me that the flower at the end of each branch could be taken off and put back on, like a light bulb being screwed into a socket. I remember seeing three blossoms for certain, maybe four, so I couldn't clearly see the last one. Then I sat on Dennis's lap, laid my hand tenderly on his head, and began to pray for him. That was all. Afterward, I made the following note in my journal. Perhaps this dream means that Dennis has three more years and almost a complete fourth year. It seemed to me that Dennis was that plant and that each blossom symbolized a remaining year of life. After that, I simply forgot about the dream. 
Rediscovering the dream after Dennis's death brought tremendous comfort. God had known the exact circumstances and timing of my husband's passing. He also knew how shocked I would be at seeing Dennis on the floor of his office that day. I have always believed that God is the giver of both life and death, but was heartening to realize he had been preparing me for that difficult moment. I have little doubt that dream occasionally speaks to us future events. In this instance, I believe God was speaking through my dream not to frighten me about the future, nor to warn me so I could avoid any impending disaster. Instead, my dream was a gift that helped assure me of God's loving care. Dennis's passing was not an accident in time, but part of God's plan for us both. I didn't have to worry whether I should or could have done something to prevent it. Remembering the dream reassured me God was in control of every aspect of our lives. And that was A Dream Remembered by Rita Bennett. So I hope you guys enjoyed Rita's story. And the next story that we'll be reading will be Dream Girl by Gerald Cottingham. So I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And God willing, I'll see you guys tomorrow with the story Dream Girl. Bye, guys. God bless.